Number 31. A swan on a lake gets airborne by flapping its wings and running on top of the water. If the swan must reach a velocity of 6 meters per second to take off, and it accelerates from rest at an average rate of 0.35 meters per second squared, how far will it travel before becoming airborne? All right, so let's sketch a, a quick picture here. So let this dot represent the swan, and the swan is going to have to accelerate some distance, and it says that the acceleration of the swan is going to be equal to um, 0.350 meters per second squared. It's going to also travel right some distance from the start point all the way to the end point. That's actually what it's asking us to calculate, right? We're trying to calculate the displacement here. It also says that it starts from rest. So we know that the velocity at the start here, the initial velocity that is, is going to equal zero meters per second. And we know that in order for it to finally take off, the velocity must be at the end six meters per second, right? So the final velocity here is going to be 6.00 meters per second. Now, uh, taking this information, right, knowing the initial velocity, the acceleration, the final velocity, can we calculate the displacement? So take a look at formula number four on the right hand side this one right here in the box. That relates all four of the variables together. So we should be able to use that to calculate the displacement. So let's write it down. So we have the final velocity squared is equal to the initial velocity squared plus two times the acceleration multiplied by the displacement. So the final velocity is 6.00. Okay, that's squared. The initial velocity was zero, and that's squared, plus two times the acceleration, which is 0.350 and now my displacement, which is x. So let's do the math. 6 squared is going to be 36, 0, because I need three sig figs. And then it's 2 times 0 0.350. So that's simply going to be uh, 0 0.700, and that's x, right, times x. And then divide out the 0 0.700 from both sides. So my displacement here should be, let's take out the calculator. So it's 36 divided by 0.7. So it comes out to about, um, 51.4. So we got 51.4 meters. Okay, so that's how far this swan is going to have to travel before it can get airborne. So that was part A. Now let's take a look at part B. It says now how long does this take? So what we're doing now is we're going to solve for time. Okay, so again, I can use, now I know the displacement, so I can use a whole bunch of formulas, but I'd still like to use formulas that involve the initial, the final, and the acceleration since they were given, right? Maybe I made a mistake in copying them, but uh, I think that's uh, pretty unlikely. Whereas if I use displacement now, you know, I had to do some calculations. Maybe I made an error. I don't want those calcul I don't want that error um, to propagate into my next answer. So what I'm going to try to do is choose a formula between initial velocity, acceleration, final velocity, and time. And if you realize it's the first equation on the top, that relates all four of those variables. So let's do that. So the final velocity is equal to the initial velocity plus the acceleration times time. The final velocity was six meters per second. The initial velocity was zero. The acceleration was 0 0.350. And now we're looking for t. So just simplifying this, right, it's 0 0.350 t. Divide out now the 0 0.350 from both sides, 350. And now we get the time is equal to, so six divided by 0.35 works out to be 17.1, 17.1, and that'll be in seconds. And that will be the time it takes for the swan to go from zero meters per second to six meters per second, accelerating at a value of 0 0.350. Guys, thanks so much for tuning in. I hope this helped. Please remember to subscribe. And I'll see you next time.